Hola and welcome to my channel Clear Vision. My name's Simon and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. This week's video is about beyond the diagnosis, the mental health diagnosis that a lot of us seek out, that a lot of us are looking for, that a lot of us get, what to do with it, how to take it and how to move forward from it. But before we get into that, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, it really does help the channel. It helps me keep producing videos like this and covering all sorts of subjects that a lot of us face challenges, that are challenges that a lot of us face in life. And also stay tuned in the next two to three weeks where I'll be releasing a six part series on shadow work, which takes obviously the Jungian concept of shadow work, how to do it, why it's good to do it. And also I take a psychodynamic viewpoint on it and also a gestalt viewpoint on it and some exercises and the entire six part workshop for you guys out there who are interested in shadow work moving on first of all when we talk about the the diagnosis a lot of us are referring to something called the dsm which is the diagnostic and statistics manual now psychology and psychiatry overtook psychotherapy yes i'm a psychotherapist maybe i have a slight bias i don't know um it was developed in the 50s it was basically a bunch of guys getting around and coming up with criteria to fit certain conditions or human pathologies if you like behavioral tendencies ways of being so it was a criteria that fitted that so it was a diagnostic tool so you could diagnose someone's mental health i.e they fit these certain criterias these are they're doing these nine things tick the boxes and here's the treatment plan that goes with that and here's the name for it now in and of itself it's not a bad tool but it is exactly just that it's a tool uh they're on the fifth edition of it now so you might hear it referred to as the dsm v v as in the roman numeral number five there are also a lot of psychiatrists who've defected from psychiatry because of this mechanization of the of human nature the human condition you know it's a, it's a mechanization and we're not mechanical you can't box us in we're way too complex we're way too nuanced and everything's way too subjective and this has been some of the criticisms of the dsm um, and along the years certain cultural norms have uh, pr have worked their way into or societal expectations have worked their way into the dsm and influenced some of the mental health conditions and a lot of uh, normal ways of being such as low mood depressive disorder and stuff like that low mood after a certain event has happened have been classed as a mental health disorder so it's turning things into uh, it's, it's medicalization of certain uh, natural emotions and ways of being and as well as pathologizing them as well so there's heavy criticism for the dsm however it is a measurable standard and i think this is important to acknowledge some of the dsm or aspects of it have also been criticized because some of the people who help create it are also heavily linked with pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies we have to also acknowledge that this is an Amer this started out as an american thing so obviously there's a lot to do with big pharma or pharmaceutical companies and also uh, insurance policies. For example, Gabor Mate goes on about how alcoholism ended up being put into the DSM so that it could be treated under uh, insurance purposes. Hence the whole kind of advent of alcoholism is a disease it had to be listed as a disease as a condition in order for it to get treated on insurance which actually misdirected a lot of the a lot of the causes of addiction and this is what Gabor Mate goes on about um, there are various other things as well very much the same ADHD um which now encompasses add as well so a lot of stuff gets put in taken out i think homosexuality was also in there in the 90s which got removed so somehow homosexuality was a mental health disorder so it's treated as the bible of the psychological world and the mental health world and in fact it's actually not so let's start there um, why am I telling you this? Because a, a lot of people search out a diagnosis. What does that do? Well, 
if you search out a diagnosis, you are, a lot of people are looking for the why am I the way I am? And if I have a diagnosis, if I have a label, then I know what it is. And then I can kind of work with it. And it makes quite logical sense, I guess. So this makes actually quite a lot of logical sense. I can find out the term, the label for what I am, and therefore I can receive a treatment. Um, there's a slight flaw in that logic, which I'm going to get into. Uh, the diagnosis doesn't often take into account the history of the person per se. Um, it takes into account the behaviors of the here and now. It doesn't take into account the idiosyncrasies. It doesn't take into account the paradigm. It doesn't take into account particularly how you got there, but it does give you a label. Sometimes labels are really helpful, but sometimes there's an issue with labels, which is people can hide behind the label as a defense mechanism in preventing themselves from moving forward. I have actually seen this one. I think the, the kind of um, most blatant one I ever saw was an alcoholic who, after being diagnosed as an alcoholic in the doctor's surgery with his family present, then proceeded to open um, a bottle of alcohol. And when the family objected, and uh, we're pretty much gonna leave said person on their own, the person's answer was, I'm, a I'm an alcoholic, this is what I do. You heard what the doctor said. Um, and it wasn't until some time later when their whole world bottomed out, fell apart, and they crashed out on the rocks that they actually started doing something about it. So in instances like that, the label's not so helpful. The diagnosis also doesn't solve the problem. And I think a lot of people I come across kind of roll with this. Like once I've got the diagnosis, then everything's gonna be cool. My life is gonna change. And actually, no, it's not. You just got a diagnosis now. There is no change. Um, you still actually need to put the work in if in order to affect the change in your life. So I'll give you an example. I've had this with students when I was a lecturer in university. So a student who has uh, dyslexia. Now there are several ways to approach that people will approach with this with this problem. So I have dyslexia, so therefore this this university has to completely accommodate my condition. Um, and you can go, mm, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, I don't know how we accommodate everybody differently, everybody with dyslexia all differently. So that doesn't quite work. And that's and it kind of comes across as, uh, or it's normally put to you that I don't have to do assignments, I don't have to do research, I don't have to do this because I can't do it. Um, and obviously standing next to them is maybe somebody else with dyslexia with the same problem who's asking for how can I, how can I achieve what I want to achieve? How can I fit the criteria needed? How can I accomplish this with this uh, diagnosis of dyslexia? Now this is, a better approach obviously and then there's right where we can do time extensions on um, uh, deadlines for assignments and deadlines for your internship you we have time management tools we have color charts we have overlays for your reading materials we have a computer you know with programs which can give you audio which can help you make your notes and organize your notes there's a whole host of tools out there to help you with your condition now this is an example of someone who's going, okay, so I've now got this, I've now been diagnosed, I've got my diagnosis, I know what I've got, now I can implement a plan of action in order to improve my life and get to where I want to get to. The first example is someone who's gone, I've got my diagnosis, therefore I don't have to do anything now and the world has to accommodate my diagnosis. It may be a little bit of a crude and a clunky example, I admit, but it's to illustrate, it's to highlight the different ways of dealing with diagnosis now in the kind of mental health side of things when people are looking for a diagnosis say for instance when I'm working with people with autism yes I understand what autism is but I want to understand what your autism is what your version is so I work with that so I so it's about working with the subjective it's about working with the individual and diagnosis often does not as I said before it doesn't really acknowledge the individual and their own idiosyncrasies and their own kind of version of the diagnosis that they're going for or that they've been given. On a philosophical and a kind of a logical stance to this, 
and this might sound quite controversial as well, is that the diagnosis doesn't change anything. You still had certain challenges in your life, certain behavioral and thinking reactions to the world in different situations that you most people are quite aware of. So, you know, I'm aware of I don't function the same as everybody else. I'm aware of I don't understand things in the same way other people do. I'm, I'm aware of I have some sensory issues. I have some other issues and I blah, 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 blah. blah. I, I'm aware that in certain aspects of life, I am different. I behave different. I, you know, I react to situations in certain, like I said, I react to situations in certain ways. I'm prone to certain bouts of depression, melancholy, anxiety, etc., etc. The diagnosis brings you nothing other than confirmation that these things you're experiencing are happening and they do have a name. The maintenance plan, the improvement plan, the treatment plan, however you want to put it, the things you need to put in place, the things you need to learn in order to be able to manage your world. That's the bit that was always there and often gets overlooked because the focus is on the diagnosis. The focus is on getting the diagnosis. So I'm not sure if I've explained this very well, but for example, if you have um, certain levels of social anxiety um, and you can get sensory overload, there are things you will work out in treatment post diagnosis in order for you to be able to protect yourself against such overwhelming instances which may lead you to i don't know harming yourself in some way um, or engaging in detrimental behaviors now that was always there which you can discover with a therapist with a good therapist you can discover what you are doing bring that to conscious awareness and then you can facilitate and learn how to manage that how to improve that for yourself so that the world isn't such a difficult place for you to be in now obviously there are some extremes and i'm talking i'm not going into the extremes um particularly those can be improved so this is kind of a lot of people i guess where i'm going with this is a lot of people focus on the diagnosis then once they've got the diagnosis then they're med then they've got the medication then they've got this and i get in my room a lot of people years down the line the medication doesn't work and it's like well yeah because you haven't done anything else you know the the diagnosis brought me nothing in fact i'm not even sure the diagnosis is correct well no because it's subjective and you know it depends on who's doing the diagnosing and it depends on what you've told them etc etc and where you were at that point in your life what is prominent what is prevalent is you are aware or we can bring into your awareness if you're not aware we can kind of map out how you interact with the world and how that affects you to your detriment to your benefit and we can work on those that's the point so i guess what i'm trying to say all in all is if you are out there looking for a diagnosis if you are trying to focus on the diagnosis if you think the psychological diagnosis is the be all and end all and it's going to fix you chances are it's not chances are you've got a bigger journey ahead of you and you can make that journey way shorter way more effective if you begin to actually really pick apart look at dissect acknowledge bring to awareness the way you interact with the world the way the world affects you from there you can then build ways in which you can interact with the world that do not detrimentally harm you so much you'll become aware of certain situations that you need to avoid or have time out on you'll be learn skills to be able to take yourself out of situations to say no to certain things you'll be aware of actually i need this outlet here i need this time out there i need this i need to be around animals i need to recharge i need to get into nature um and I need to implement better time management and different ways and, and charts and things. All of these things that are available out there to be able to improve your life. And also explain and help others around you understand how you are, why you are. A lot of people need time out. A lot of people disappear off and they start, you know, their, their, their focus isn't there. And it allow, having an awareness of that an ability to understand that an ability to communicate that across to other people so that they understand this is part of who you are you're still engaged but you're distracted elsewhere or you need to fidget all the time etc etc and again i'm looking at mild conditions um 
there are other conditions out there which do need medication etc etc which are almost incurable um unfortunately brain traumas traumatic start in life genetic makeup things like that these also need to be acknowledged but again there are ways of improving that making small increments of improvement managing stuff like this so i hope that helps i hope that gives you a little bit of insight into what the dsm is and what psychology is psychiatry is what psychotherapy is um and how a diagnosis uh can be of help to you and also how a diagnosis isn't necessarily the be all and end all and is necessarily needed stay tuned for more like i said there's the shadow work stuff coming soon in the next two to three weeks and until i see you again please take very good care of yourselves adios